Buenos días, hoy vamos a jugar a Tales of Berseria. Nos habíamos quedado después de un día pescando ahí a saco con un capítulo largo, largo de pesca. Bueno, habíamos empezado medio, más de medio capítulo con escenitas, entonces por eso el capítulo quedó más largo, para pescar y hacer algo. Encontramos una vasija y vamos a mirar la expedición lo primero de ahora. Ropa de baño para Rokuro. Oh, oh, oh. Lo tengo, esto lo tengo que poner en directo, o sea, ropa de baño para Rokuro. A ver. Ay, pero no puedo. Mierda, no puedo, no puedo. Solo tengo a Velvet, joder. Por cierto, de Velvet eh, no le puse el traje sin chaqueta porque es feísimo. O sea, ahí... No, no me gusta. O sea, le queda guapísima la chaqueta, aunque esté rota, así... No sé, tan larga y esto queda guay. Es que sin chaqueta, como además está tan delgadita, se le ven los brazos muy, muy escuchirrimizados. Se ven unos bracicos que si... Que una abuela le diría, pero hija mía, come más, que tiene... Que ya estás quedando en los huesos. Pues por eso, no. No me gusta cómo le queda. A ver, ¿con quién hablamos primero? Con Rokuro. A ver si se nos une rápido y podemos probarle el traje de baño. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt. To focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Pues recordemos que eh, habíamos pescado una vasija llena de Daemon, que se convirtió también en Daemon, y dentro había también un poco de uricalco de este, así que vale, podemos entonces. A todo esto... Nada, ¿no? Ponerle... Ah, y que no sé dónde le estoy dando... No, todavía lo tenemos a... Bueno. A ver qué nos dice Majelu. ¿Has estado practicando tu dub impresión, Velvet? ¿Qué? No. Ahora, ahora, un performer en Mogilu's menagerie tiene que ser más diligente que eso. ¿Qué si nos detenemos en un checkpoint y los guardias te piden que te performe un truco? Si eso pasa, voy a enseñarles mi truco donde trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, eso sería un sight indeed. Pero seriously, si you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. Esta con tal de sacar dinero. Ay, los niños. I spy, I spy. Uh, I can't come, Awana. I've got stuff to. I spy with my little eye something that starts with V. <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it velvet? <laughs> uh, no fair. <laughs> How'd you do it so fast? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. Que llorona la niña, ¿no? <laughs> Poor V. Pues haber pensado otra cosa, yo que sé, haber dicho de que está Dale ahí, que, que estás hablando con él, yo que sé. Es que en serio. Ya, mira que, que dije que la voz que le habían puesto me molaba más que la original, que la original japonesa, pero si le vas a poner a Yorikear por todo, voy a tener lo que retirar, ¿eh? What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points. Starting with what the ones in Morg Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. No sé yo. 
A ver, volvamos a hablar con la pizzeria. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse Point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Eisen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. A ver. No es ni por dármelas de listo, ni por dármelas de que conozco el tema de la carta porque me porque conozco el juego porque lo he jugado antes pero eso es nombre claramente de, de nombre real de de Malakin aunque claro bueno Majilu debería saberlo perdona que tiene y, y Eleanor también que eso no es un nombre de pirata de persona humana pero bueno vamos a guardar y vamos a seguir como tenemos el guardador rápido ahí estoy grabando seguido Ahí está. Eizen con un tortugaz. No reply this time either. Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say it's that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I've got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did Did he just say cute? <laughs> I could help you with something. Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might? No. You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really Much. didn't read it? N no, of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reeps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! Hi. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything. And it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others. And a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. Yes, sí, ahora va a ser so Pinocho. what's your point? Y ella la I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please, I'm begging you! Okay then. Moggy, 
Oh, come on, that's so obvious. Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying. Okay, then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure, then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. <laughs> That's not any better, either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! <laughs> Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Yikes! Better watch what we say from now on. Aizen, Dang. what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helovician octopus carpaccio. Mm. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Luffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Luffy said that? Yeah. So I ended up not making it for him, but I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious, though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I do not. That's not what I mean. Then pray tell. What do you mean? La otra. Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh, Menudo grupo de marujas, en serio. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh, not what I'd expect, but... No, <laughs> I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit, shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third bollard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. 
I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. Venga, otra. La monedita. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Eisen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> cheating. What's the point no of heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. <laughs> what? That crow just flew off with the coin. Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow. Don't sweat it. I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. I don't believe it. Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air. Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. <laughs> Here I go. Sí, sí. You gotta be kidding me. Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. Se ha, lo cojones que se ha roto la moneda, pero ¿por qué? O sea, ¿qué ha pasado? ¿Qué ha sido ese explotido tan bestia que se ha cargado la moneda? En serio. Es que me da miedo saberlo. Ay, hola, Grimoire. Grimoire. May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Ifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim. And he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there. But it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the Reaper's curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth affinity and my Reaper's curse aren't much different, and that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Huh. <sighs> so, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh. Bueno. Menos es nada, oye. Ay, ahora ya tenemos a a Rokuro. Voy a verle el traje en directo de baño. Hombre, falla el el... no estoy enfocando a posta, que, que conste. El... la rosa. Falla la rosa. 
pero hombre, queda bien. Pero bueno, mmm... es que la rosa me falla mucho. Voy a dejarlo sin chaqueta. Y voy a hablar con Benwick a ver dónde nos vamos. Hey, Aizen, ¿hay algo que podemos hacer sobre el Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean, every day it goes out on these hunts or whatever and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt. What's the big deal? Well, yeah, at first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while, but then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk. I hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. Ah. Es probably the first gran time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck. I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince <laughs> and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, don't drop that on the deck. Are you listening to me? Ah, Dios. Dime que el barco está bien, que tenemos que salir de aquí. Dios. Bueno, vamos, salimos primero y que todavía no ha llegado la, la expedición. A partir de ahora los capítulos serán de expedición en expedición. Me parece a mí. Ah, ¿podemos ir donde queramos? Vale, pues tenemos algún sitio que nos diga dónde tenemos que ir. Espérate. A ver. No. Porque yo ahora estoy... Se supone que es esto, ¿no? Ah, no, esto es... Pues... Ah, me sigue al punto de pulso de res en Midgan. Vale, sí, en Midgan. Era ahí. ¿no? Vale, Midgan, ¿dónde está? Ajá. Puerto Zexon, Puerto Cadmix. A ver. Vamos a ver. ¿Dónde, ¿Dónde está el mapa? Mapa del mundo. Estas son las estas de clase tal. Vale, Midgan está ahí. O sea, la estrellita la tenemos en Puerto Zexon, ¿verdad? Pues vamos a Puerto Zexon, ok. Puerto Zexon. Hay una pequeña paradita. Pues todo parece tranquilo, ¿no? ¿Mm? 
The boss has given me a message for you. Dino. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sensed. Give the... Tabitha our thanks. Perfecto. La misma dirección en la que Lapi. Bueno, Fi. It's looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But. Aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? No. We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible. But at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. <laughs> Tú, el curry, quieres curry. This is everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yes! Please don't embarrass me. Mm -hmm. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. <laughs> what? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh, well, not like it matters. It does matter! <laughs> There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. Vale. Vamos a ver los... Los mensajeros estos. Ah, no, este era... No, o con... Que yo quiero arriesgarme a... Este es el de la trupe de Magilu Y el otro es en la posada Bueno, lo de la trupe de Magilu es la misión secundaria Que bueno, que es bastante rápido Lo podemos hacer en el próximo episodio Y ya está, porque es algo rápido Y empezamos con esto y ya está Sin problema Así que lo dejamos aquí ya y ya está. Espero que os haya gustado el vídeo. Podéis darle a like, suscribiros, dejar algún comentario. Y nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. Adiós.